Hey everybody, welcome to another Stoneface Reactions. I'm Theta, and, well, I want to say something here real quick, and this is going to sound really weird, considering the timings of the scheduling. Because uh, if you uh, see this as a silver tier Patreon, um, you already know, because you have seen the announcements just today, if you're seeing this as a bronze member on Patreon, this is a couple of months removed. If you're seeing this on YouTube, it's not going to make any goddamn sense because you've known for a long time now. Uh, just today, uh, Griffin, uh, not from these reactions, not from Voltaise 5, but the show, um, the show, the channel altogether, uh, has made his announcement that he's uh, pulling back from the recordings and everything. So he's not going to be with us anymore, doing any other shows. Hits me right here. It hits me right here. I almost feel choked up, like I'm about to cry on a recording for no reason. Because uh, if you don't know, we were do we uh, me and Griff started recording videos seven years ago, actually, to this year, uh, where we would do tabletop gaming, right? And we would do about I don't know, twenty four hours a week, right? So, maybe like 8, or maybe, sorry, maybe like 8, 16, 24, yeah, no. We would record about 8 hours a day, uh, 3 days a week, for about 24 hours. So, yeah, for about 7 years, well, about 6 years, and then 2 years ago, we started doing this instead of tabletop. So, Griff has been basically my best friend online for about 7 years now, I got here. For about 7 years now. So... It is going to be exceedingly difficult coming on uh, day after day without his uh, constant presence here to uh, counterbalance me. Yeah, this wasn't really just a... Uh... Ooh, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, did... This is the problem. Is I always seem zero emotional. I'm sure I don't even look like I'm breaking up, but that's why it's stone-faced reactions. We were... Never good at expressing emotion. And, uh, but yeah. I wish the best for Griff, of course. But it's gonna be hard to lose your best friend of seven years. Because we don't really do much outside of this. Anyway, this isn't what you came here for. I just wanted to express it here because it'll be the first recording that I'm doing since, uh, since he, uh, made his announcement. And, uh, I figure this is the best place. I'm probably gonna do, like, a smaller, similar thing for every episode after, so that every every new recording gets made, uh, whoever's here for the one show will know. Because there are a bunch of shows that people are only specifically here for, so they'll only know why he's not here for that one show. But, yeah, I guess the last time we were here... The uh, characters were having a bit of an infighting because the three of them... Um, God, I can't remember the color coming. Oh, they're on the screen. I forgot. They're in my overlay. But hold on. Green, red, and green? I'm sorry. Is the little kid black or is the little kid green? Because he's got green in his outfit and black. I'm going to say he's black. Black, green, and red. Their mother, having died the previous episode before last one, and we had American Blue here being a dick about it, and we realized his whole emotional backstory about his mother uh, also um, sacrificing her life to save him, which is like a mirror for them, just with wolves instead of a space monster uh, robot thing. We had that whole emotional thing. Already, uh, I think his name is Hikaru or something like that. Sorry. We have so many characters in uh, all the shows that I've been watching that have similar names. Because, you know, some names are just popular amongst anime characters that I'm having a hard time. And uh, normally I would do, like, a concept board for, like, relationships between characters. But the concept board, literally their data service caught on fire. And they're still putting all their shit back together again, so I just don't have that to go back to either. But yeah, my point being is that they went through emotional turmoil. He even has a moment where he says, yeah, so what? I said I wasn't going to cry, and I'm crying. What about it? And I feel like that's where I'm at right now, is that I need an episode of emotional reprieve, or at least 
um, something that gets it out there. I need something that both solves the characters' problems that they had last time, right? Like, they solved their problems by the end of the episode, but clearly I need them to do something else today to help me with my emotional problems for today. I don't know if we're going to get some sort of real-life crossover here where I feel happier by the end of their episode due to them solving a problem that I'm having, but that's what I need. Before I was going to record today, I was going to say that uh, Yellow, the girl, um, the general's daughter, we were going to have an episode dealing with her backstory with her father and whatever's going on now, but now I just need something for me. Voltase 5, I need something for me today. <laughs> Uh, help me out, Voltase 5. So, before I start blubbering on again and possibly seeing, letting you see me actually cry, because I'm sure you saw nothing here. I'm just red-faced monster. Uh, let's just go ahead and get into it. <laughs> I got thrown for a second. I forgot that while I was uh, recording uh, Crest of the Stars the other night, I muted the uh, the player so that I could take screenshots of the show for characters and um, for the thumbnail. So I'm playing it and I'm like, oh god, the music's not coming on. I better turn it up to 80. No, oh, wait, no, that's not rough. So I've already missed my favorite part of the opening, which is our xylophone entrance. You have to wait for that one that comes in near the end. This could also be a, a really bad rattle depending on how you want to take it. Oh, we got a new tiefling. Looks like a character out of Ronin Warriors, actually. I like how they played out every part of his uh, sword motion. going to be our first uh, non-robot. I appreciate that they're trying to defeat his uh, finishing move. So I'm watching Crest of the Stars at the same time. So we have genetically modification here and genetically modification there. Didn't he have uh, horns before? Maybe I just imagined he had horns before. It's also interesting to know that you can be bestowed horns. He did the American guys, the cowboy. I don't think these two are going to clear up their uh, differences. Hot! Hot! 
Oh, is she gonna be the direct counter to the swords guy? See, I don't know if this works in real life. I feel like you'd slice your palms open. How do you even have a defense force left? Everything got destroyed. I'm still very confused about the events of episode one. This does have the feel of uh, Nappa from uh, Dragon Ball Z, though. Or Goldo, I guess, from uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Our main guy here. I feel like he's shouting. It's basically like spiral power from Gurren Lagann. No shit, it's his only weapon. I'm not terribly strong, he can't hit any one of you, apparently. I guess, to the benefit of the show, I mean, I guess why wouldn't you try to attack it one-on-one -on -one, all with all the smaller bits, but to the benefit of the show, they don't go like 20 minutes trying to defeat it with every little, little thing. They try it once. This isn't working. Let's form together. So I think too many modern incarnations of, the, uh, of this kind of concept spend a lot of time faffing around when they don't need to be. I still say though, this many episodes in, we don't need to show the whole transformation thing. Just do the Voltaze 5, do the theme song while they're fighting, and just let's get into it. Is this new? I don't think I've seen this one before. <laughs> the move that I wish they would just quit doing. You're gonna have to tell me this, viewer. Was this something that the toy could do? Did this toy spit out tops? I mean, I kinda understand it. Our American guy is good with whips, and it seems like the top move is just all of his whip moves in once. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, turn back to do what, though? You run back to base. Why wouldn't it just follow you back to your base? That's certainly one way to avoid getting hit. Just break apart. That's what I said. Can you already do this to him and it didn't like do anything? Well, of course, it's gotta work now because you gotta get away. What's the lesson I'm going to learn from this episode? That's going to apply to what I told you before we started recording, right? Can't run away from your problems. Is that going to be it? No, no, they just ran away. So never mind. So the butterfly counterattack is that what we're going with? Except I'm slightly disappointed. We're going with his martial arts. We're going with his martial arts counterattack. Like, you know, we just showed earlier in the episode. I was hoping we were going to go with Megumi's own sword fighting skill instead. I guess that comes from what I said before, that I was hoping for... Oh, you try catching a butterfly with the same move that you do to do that? You're gonna just slice your hands open. Oh, are you saying he controls everything when they're all together? So what are they doing when he's controlling everything? Because of course it would. Where else would he go? What would he stop fighting? I think this is an argument for everybody needs to be uh, trained to control the Voltaise 5. So that you could put him in control and he can do the butterfly return. Not just Red getting trained on everything. I guess he's using a stick. So if he's using a real sword, he's gonna cut his brother's hands up and he's not gonna have anything to defeat with or defend with. I guess I'm also confused to the size of the enemy, right? Are these guys as just big normally, or are they being like grown up in size? 
This does really do make me think of uh, Power Rangers, though. Specifically, uh, the episode where Goldo imprisons Jason in human form in a like cave area and just keeps beating the crap out of him. I know I'm making allusions to 90s American TV, probably to a fan base. That only knows this. Seriously, it would be easier to train your brother on how to operate the Voltaze 5 than apparently beating the crap out of you. Gumi, who's already with you. You're trying to catch a bullet? If you catch a bullet, you can catch a blade, is that it? I mean, I like it. Not what I hoped would happen, but I like it. How would you even try to explain that when you got back, right? He told me to shoot him, so I shot him. I don't know what he was up to, he failed whatever it was. It's also pointedly his sword is weaker than the main gun of a skull base. Because they opened up that shield in one hit. Yoshi, Omaimo Kasan no Kodana. 
Seriously, though. They need to train each other to pilot the Voltes 5. It would be so much easier than having one guy do everything. Can you imagine that's going to come back later as some sort of like lock on the thing? If it's not them saying, let's vault in, that somebody can't steal the machine. I gotta wonder what the symbolism is of giving them a horn. If it's something that you can give. Oh, I thought they were gonna say focus on his hands. What's it like? It's like trying to close your hands on the upturn of a butterfly's wings. This is even worse, because he's a fucking person. He's not like the robot guy. They literally sliced into him, burned it, and then went up. That's brutal. at least nobody survives, so they don't have to come back and get punished. Almost got thrown off by the uh, the ending credits again. I will say I appreciate that they go through like a we have to learn a new thing every time. Because I feel like if I keep comparing this to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is just the Megazord Blade thing. Whoosh, every time. Right up until like a season ender or something, where it's like the sword's not working and then the, the Megazord gets destroyed or something. Whereas this is, I have to do something different every time because every boss has something that could defeat us. And I'm going to assume eventually we're going to get into a mode where they're going to encounter like multiple things that will defeat them at once or something. I don't know. I don't know how we're going to keep progressing to make everything interesting because I don't want this to become a monster of the week sort of thing. Or, I know it's a Monster of the Week. I don't want it to fall into the tropes of Monster of the Week. Because otherwise it's going to lose interest. And, well, I do think, now that I think about it, Power Rangers did at least have stuff that happens outside. So I guess there could be episodes of this where they don't fight a monster at all. And it's just their lives being interrupted. Because if they're not monsters all the time, or I'm sorry, they're not monsters. If they're not giants all the time. It's entirely possible they could, like, meet up on the street or something if we ever get a setting that's not the base, right? 
But then again, that leads back into what I want. I want like a rebellion, an uprising, a fight against these guys. But it doesn't look like they control the Earth like they did at the end of Episode 1. It seems like we've got a defense force up again and everything, despite that all having been destroyed in Episode 1. So I don't know. It'd be easier if I had any patrons watching this, but I'm thinking I'm recording this exclusively for YouTube at this point, so make of that what you will. Uh, anyways, yeah, um, I'm gonna have to say this is one of the lesser episodes. I really like that we learned something and everything, but there was nothing really different about this episode from the from what I thought this show was going to be. And more than that, I thought this was going to be a Megumi-centric episode, and it turned out not to be for, I guess, no good reason. She's the sword girl. This was a sword boss. And in fact, we stepped Megumi down to raise the um, the uh, bow staff brother up <laughs> so he could defeat Megumi and then have the knowledge to defeat the bad guy. So, I don't know. Yeah, but I don't think I have any additional thoughts. This is really a face-of-it show until something deeper gets introduced or somebody ends up commenting to me that I'm missing stuff, kind of like with Symphogear and how all the relics have all these really in-depth backstories to them that I wasn't realizing until like two seasons in when the comments started pouring in about all the stuff we're missing. I thrive on you telling me what I'm missing so that I can better understand the show. So, until then, I've been Theta, this has been Stoneface Reactions, this has been Voltace 5, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another Stoneface Reactions. If you have an idea of another video we could go ahead and watch, go ahead and put it in the comments down below and we'll add it to the wheel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you thought about this video and what parts you liked. And until then, we'll see you next time. Is this too goofy?